Rebecca mentioned earlier that, that soils in the past have been a, a laughing matter, and certainly we've been a bit slow to take soils seriously as a society, but awareness and action is growing, particularly in business. In the next five minutes, I hope to give you a picture of why and how businesses are engaging with soil health, and also why partnerships between public and private sectors matter in securing a healthy future underpinned by healthy soils. So first, why are businesses engaging? The value and responsibility of soils doesn't, for soils doesn't stop at the farm gate. Value and responsibility of soils flows out, up and down supply chains and into our local, national and global economies. Businesses across sectors are underpinned by soils, not only the primary industries and agri-food companies. Soil support supply chains across many industries, including fashion and pharmaceuticals. The role in water quality and availability that so soils play means that industries that are water intensive also have a stake, so manufacturing and energy generation. And ultimately, soils role in climate change means that soils present a risk and an opportunity for every organisation. Soils affect the bottom line of every business. The costs may be hidden, they're hidden in market and supply chain volatility, in the costs of water scarcity and remediation, and in the substantial costs of climate change. This message is one I set out in a piece in Nature on, on the business case for soil back in 2017, and it's one I've been having conversations with with global businesses for the past two years in partnership with the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. They're a CEO-led forum of 200 plus businesses across sectors that work together to advance sustainability in business. And through this partnership, we've developed a strong and growing dialogue on soils in business. The business buy-in to, to this dialogue has been demonstrated uh, by the report Matthew mentioned that was published by the WBCSD last December on the business case for investing in soil health. And that saw 20 plus companies across five continents, across sectors, come together in co-authorship along with NGOs and uh, other entities from the international community such as the UNCCD. And I call it a landmark as it's the first of its kind. It's a really important signal to the international community that businesses recognise the value of soils, that soils form a material risk and a real opportunity in business. The report is, is freely available online. I have a few copies if anyone would like one. It outlines where the business case uh, for soils uh, can be made within, within organisations and gives examples of where this is already being put into practice. To name one, one example briefly, um, there's an example in there about the Midwest Crow, uh, Mid, uh, sorry, excuse me, Midwest Row Crop Collaborative. It's like a tongue twister. Um, and that collaborative is made up of private and, and public partners, including the US Environmental Defence Fund, Bayer, Cargill, uh, Kellogg's, McDonald's, PepsiCo, Unilever, Walmart, and uh, NGOs like WWF and the Nature Conservancy. And they've been investing together to deliver soil health in the Upper Mississippi Basin, supporting farmers to trial and innovate and share practices that increase soil health and sequester carbon. More details can be found in the report, but to give you a taste of some of the broader takeaways as well, the report finds that the business case is abundant and diverse, delivering revenue, resilience and reputational benefits uh, for businesses. The second message is that soils are a long-term business. It needs long-term changes in practice to deliver soil health, particularly in the context of climate change. But what's important here is also initial investments can be crucial in instigating change. It helps support farmers overcome those initial hurdles to change in practice. And finally, the businesses and case studies underlined time again that partnership is really key here for delivering soil health. Partnership across supply chains, across landscapes, and across private and public sector. So just to underline this point that partnership matters, an investment in soil delivers both public and private goods, and businesses recognise this. Private asset or public good, the answer is both. It delivers a broad set of values, and this needs to be reflected in our approach to investment. As benefits can be diverse and diffuse, a case predicated on one form of benefit alone, or one beneficiary, is unlikely to be successful. There are 
innovative new examples of public-private financing uh, soil health uh, beginning to emerge elsewhere. One example is the Land Degradation Neutrality Fund, spearheaded by the UNCCD and the Rockefeller Foundation and the governments of France, Luxembourg and Norway, which is mobilising 300 million US dollars for land restoration projects. So examples are there. The opportunity is there to scale up this approach. Government commitment ensures delivery at meaningful scales for a nation. Many businesses are ready to play their part in this partnership. And I guess the question here is, is there uh, appetite for that in policy as well?